uh, going. Sounds good. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dan. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. Not that you had a choice, but uh, glad to see you regardless. Uh, it's going to move you up through all three. Uh, as Dan mentioned, my name is Eric Mullen. I work in student life, and right now I'm helping out in admissions as well. So kind of all over campus and really enjoying that right now. Uh, I hope today to give you an introduction to some cloud computing resources. But I want to be honest, there's a lot of ground here, and I doubt you're going to walk away feeling 100% comfortable with these tool sets, but it might pique your interest as to how these systems could help you in some of your job functions. And really, I wanted to share this around being more efficient, being able to collaborate at a higher level, um, and possibly be more creative in your, in your work as well, and being able to solve complex issues using some new tool sets. So that's my hope for today. Uh, anytime you have questions hereafter, feel free to drop me an email, give me a call. I'd be glad to help you out with these things. And I've got to be honest, I do have an ulterior motive with this as well. I've for a long time been petitioning the college to move to Google for our email. And I've been just kind of going to different constituencies, so I'm so thankful to be in front of you today. So if I can get you on my bandwagon, <laughs> drop notes to IT, let them know how great this looks, um, that we can get away from uh, group-wise, because it's not my favorite thing in the world. So that's my little soapbox there. <laughs> Feel free to ask questions as we go throughout. But I want to start really quickly about defining what is cloud computing. I was going to start with what cloud computing is not. And so the traditional method of computing has been, it's all here. All of your data, the software that you use, is stored on the device. Or in the case of a large organization like ours, a lot of that's on our servers. So you save things to the J drive, the S drive. And if you're not on the network, you don't have access to those things very easily, unless you have a, a VPN client, but not everybody has that widely. So this is the traditional way of doing things. You have to have specific software installed on a specific machine. And if you're without your files, you're SOL pretty much if you want to get to stuff. And obviously, our world's changed. We're on the go a lot. We have mobile devices, laptops. Uh, internet connection, and the internet connection is really where our mode of connectivity is now. And it's really difficult to share the most current version of a file when you're in this environment. So if I send this to you and two weeks go by, but we've made more changes, and you send it back, and the document's altered, I don't know if you've ever been in that situation before. It becomes really kind of a pain in the butt to make sure you have the most current information. So that is what cloud computing is now. That's kind of the standard model of computing. This is kind of a, a simple diagram, hopefully giving you a sense of what cl uh, cloud computing is. And that this uh, infamous cloud is where your data and actually software is now made available. So it's not on your computer. Uh, it's provided through organizations such as Google that they allow you to have access to these systems through a web browser. So you don't have anything installed on your computer. You just open a web browser. And there you have both your data whether it's Word documents or, or spreadsheets or data that you kept there, and you have the software available through the web browser that you can then edit and modify that content as well. And it doesn't matter what device you're on. You can still get to your data, still use the software, whether you're operating from a tablet, a mobile device, you're at your computer. Even on digital books now have access to like Kindles and other e-readers to that kind of content as well. But what I think is probably the most promising and valuable aspect about this is the connection that you have to other collaborators, especially when we're working in an educational environment such as ours. I think this is where the most power is, that you can connect with more people around projects and sharing information and access than you could in a standard computing environment. Kind of makes sense? OK. So I want to talk about Google and Google Apps. And this is probably the most powerful, well-developed set of cloud computing uh, services out there. There's other emerging ones and some really other cool tools that are there. But this is really the organization that's really driven this technology and made it available widespread. One of the things that I strongly advocate for too, and I'm very thankful that we've moved our students to Gmail and to the Google Docs, is because our students, as you probably are very acutely aware of, don't always have consistent access to computers. And you've probably heard horror stories of them losing or their file drive or their thumb drives becoming corrupted. And there goes everything. If you've taught it all, you've heard that story many times before. But, um, but a lot of times, students really don't have consistent access to technology. They might be at their grandparents' house one night working on homework or come on campus in our library. But the cool thing about Google Docs is if they're storing their stuff there and using that technology, it doesn't matter where they're at. They always have access to their stuff. Obviously, the one uh, weakness to this model is that if you don't have an internet connection, you're, you're in trouble there as well. But uh, as long as you have an internet connection, which is becoming more widespread and available, you have access to your tools. So I want to quickly give you a 
just a cursory overview of this tool set. And as you can see, I'm going to focus on the Gmail component. I'll talk a little bit about calendar. And then really today, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about documents. Uh, but there are other, are other tool sets within here as well. Sites, for instance, where students can develop their own personal web pages. YouTube is now uh, greatly integrated into the service as well. Uh, they have a really cool chat and um, video um, conferencing type service as well. So there's other things out there, but today we're going to focus on these three. So Gmail is really the hub of this system. And it ties all these other pieces together. So once you log into your Gmail account, you essentially now have access to all these other tools, whether it's Google Docs or a really robust calendar system. This is where it's at. Um, and the other thing, too, that's really nice is as you start to interact with these systems and people make changes to documents or want to message you about something, it will alert you through Gmail. And when you open up that email and see that uh, Liz has modified a document, it gets the link right there or will pull it up in the window so you have really quick and instantaneous access to those uh, pieces of data and content. Now, calendar, I'm all about this with students, especially when we teach CLS 100 and talk about time management organizational skills. They're like, we have a test today? Yeah, we have a test today. Uh, but the thing I like about this is it's really highly integrated with mobile devices. So when I teach students about time management, I show them like, hey, you've got this college email account. It's associated with this calendar. Let's open it up. Go through and spend some time, 25, 30 minutes, and plug in where all of your due dates are, uh, when your assignments are due, and so forth. And then you can actually integrate it with your mobile device. Even if it's just a simple uh, flip phone, it can send you a text. For papers, you can get a text a week out like, hey, you've got this paper due next week, or 24 hours for a test reminder, and things like that. So try to help students see that uh, these are great ways, even if you're not organizationally inclined, to use these systems to work for you. Uh, the only thing I don't like about this calendar system is it does not play well with group-wise. So as much as I'd prefer to use this, it doesn't work well for our work environments as of right now. So again, please go spread the message this time we move to Gmail. <laughs> All right, so the lion's share of my conversation with you today is going to be around documents. And I don't want to assume that you don't have any knowledge about this. I know a lot of people are using this across the institution or in their personal lives or, or for their own academic pursuits and so forth. But I hope today that I spark some interest by you and some brainstorming to think like, hey, this has been a problem for us. Maybe this will help provide a new solution so we can do this better. The one thing that, again, going back to my, my initial mantra, is that if we had this associated with our work accounts, we wouldn't have to create a separate account as well. But I, I really hope that we move in that direction eventually. But we're going to talk about uh, three main components inside of documents. Documents, which is the word processing, similar to Word. Uh, we're talking about spreadsheets, data, information, very similar to Excel. And then inside spreadsheets, there's the ability to build forms as well. So I'm going to talk about those three tool sets inside of Google Docs. Before we get started, though, I want to show you just a brief video that I think does a great job kind of highlighting the, the overview of the Google system so you can kind of get a nice top view of what they offer. So let me just make sure my sound's together. When you have a great idea and need to work with others to bring it to life, how do you do it? Sometimes it's tough because the people you work with are in different places, with different schedules, using different devices. Google Apps lets you bring ideas to life with others. Here's how. Start with email that offers more. Gmail does more than send and receive emails. It connects people and lets you chat instantly while viewing a snapshot of your team's relevant activities and access to everything they shared with you. With Google Docs, there's only one version for everyone to work on. Share easily with the right people without email attachments or compatibility hassles. <clears throat> and work together on the same docs at the same time in a way that simply makes sense. Edit and interact easily with integrated social commenting. Google Calendar makes it easy to share schedules and find times to meet and schedule or update meetings with a few clicks. Everyone can't be in the same place at the same time, but Google Apps lets you work together from any place. With multi-way video chat, you'll feel like you're all in the same room. While screen sharing and integration with Google Docs lets you work with more people from anywhere on any device, even on your mobile phone or tablet. 
work with any team at any time from any place on any device. Google Apps. Work in the future. Today. To learn more, go to google.com slash apps. Okay, so just a brief video kind of give you a highlight of some of the functionality that's uh, available through these systems. So what I want to do now, and my hope was initially when we talked about offering this session, was that we'd have you all at a computer terminal and we could do a really interactive type piece, but it didn't work out. However, uh, Evan and Langston have graciously volunteered to help me out with this piece, so I'll let you guys know when to jump in. But essentially, I'm going to take you into some live Google Docs right now so you can see some of the things that uh, the tool sets and features, and also show you some of the ways that both admissions and student life have found ways to make this um, a valuable tool for the thing and the work that we're doing. Uh, so let me just click to that. All right, so this is what it looks like. And as I mentioned, I didn't pull up the software. I didn't open up Word or Google from my desktop. I'm opening a browser. And inside that browser, I have what you can see here looks like a word processing system. It has a lot of your, your normal tool sets that you've seen, editing functions, uh, text editor, um, things like that. Uh, now, I would say this. It's not nearly as sophisticated as Microsoft products are. Um, it'd be very difficult to deliver that level of complexity through the web. But I think all the things that you really want to have access to and need on a regular basis are available for you here. I one time told some students I was sharing this with who were in a grad program, I said, you probably don't want to write your thesis in this. And then like six months later, someone wrote me and said, hey, I wrote my thesis in Google Docs. Uh -huh. you know, so <laughs> I guess you can do it. It takes a little bit more creativity in the formatting. So just to prove me wrong. Uh, but this is what kind of the standard um, page looks like. And this is where it gets a lot more interesting, however. So this is an example of Google Doc, and I think what makes it so appealing is that you can collaborate with other people on this one document or a series of documents or shared file folders, uh, both synchronously and asynchronously, which just means together in real time or um, at different time frames that we can work on the same document. Uh, Patty might be a, a night owl, and she's going to get in here at 2 AM, but I'm going to work on it at 6 AM. We can still work on that, and whenever someone opens it up, they're going to have the most recent and current version in front of them. It also has some other features that I think are really promising in uh, sharing access to content and building communications and documents together. So I want to just really quick highlight how you share these documents. And I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. I'm actually going to use a feature here to collapse the tools to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to collapse my tool set so you can see things. And there are five basic ways that you can share a document. Let me turn that control off there. Now, if someone has a Gmail account, and they don't always end in at gmail.com. For instance, our students are on Gmail, and their emails end in at email.grcc.edu. But they're actually being hosted by Gmail. So you can provide access to students or other people that have Gmail accounts by going to the share function and typing in their email addresses or referencing your contact list and just adding people to that document. What that allows you to do is track very specifically who's in there. And you can give them either edit or view rights. So if you just want them to look at the document but not touch it, you can give them view rights or you can give them edit functions and they can go ahead and make alterations to the document as well. I think this is the preferred way to work, but there's scenarios and situations where that's not always going to be applicable. The other thing you can do is you can open, uh, you can create the document as being an open document so that anybody can have access to it, whether they have a Google or Gmail account or not, and send them the link. However, the downfall with that is that you can't track who is in the document. Uh, it doesn't show their username uh, when they're in there and editing the document. Now, you can also create an open document that's available to anybody to access. And it would be uh, if someone searched keywords that were in your documents, they would find it on a web search. You can also pu publish these um, documents as a web page, which is kind of like the finished product. And I'll show you some examples of that, where you just want to show people the information um, and maybe link to it from your web page or an email that you're sending out. And then lastly, probably one of the easiest ways to um, provide access to documents and shared information is to create a folder inside your account and then provide access at the folder level to people and say, I gave everybody in this room access to that folder. Every time I stuck a file in there, you would have access to that as well. So it's one of the easiest ways to distribute access to a document and information. So really quick, um, let me just show you what, and this looks really messy. Unfortunately, it suits my way of organization really well. But this is what Google Doc looks like. So you can see up here in the tab area, 
uh, right there, that's my Gmail tab that's open. And when I go into Gmail, I have this toolbar that's available. So I click on Documents, and it opens up this window. And so I have access to everything. I'm not really good with file folders and stuff. I won't name any names, but you probably see people with their desktop, and it's like filled. Mine's not that bad. But I, I'm not really good at organizing folders. So I love this because I can just put everything in here, and I've got a ton of stuff. I've got probably 100,000 records in here. All I have to do is start typing up here, and it dynamically searches both the title of the document as well as the content inside the document. So if I forgot what it was called or what we were working on, this really easily finds things for me. So I'm not the best in organization, but this is, again, a great tool set that helps me uh, stay on top of things and find where my, my content and, and files are at. So I really like that. So you can see in here that we're using this on a fairly regular basis. Sandy uh, has been great at keeping track of a lot of scheduled times for students coming on campus. And so actually this integrates with our website. We have students fill out a web form and it populates this, and then we know who's coming when. So I'll get into that a little bit more, but just want to show you that this is what it looks like in terms of your file directory. And then when you click on a file that you want to open up, this is the page that comes up then that we were talking about earlier. So here's that Google Doc in motion. So I'm going to ask uh, Langston and Evan if they wouldn't mind uh, adding their favorite um, flavor of ice cream to my list. Okay. So there. So you can see right now, uh, whose who's type is Langston? So Langston's represented in pink, very fashionable color. <laughs> and then uh, Evan is represented in orange here. So they can work on stuff, uh, so, so they're, they're on board with this. Um, Evan, could you drop the ridership down? Yeah, thank you. Maybe untab that so it's back out there and space it. Yeah, and then me drop it one more down for me. So these guys are working on other computers, and you can see this is happening in real time. And there's not much of a delay, is there? Now, as you're typing, you're seeing what they're doing on their screen happening right here on mine. So, who, who's this? Come, could you click that and <laughs> clean that up, please? Okay, thank you. Yeah, you forgot your apostrophe, too. I should screen my volunteers better, right? All right, grammatical errors. All right. <laughs> so, so, you can see that this is... Um, this is a great way to show how you can use. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna retract there. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna retract there. Right. All right, but what I'd like to do is you can see right now though. So this is this is kind of the asynchronous. Like we don't have to be working on this together, but we could be like, hey, could you go in and put your edits in the document that we're creating together? Can you work on this? Can you add your section? Um, and then actually, can, I want to show you another really cool tool: is inserting comments. Um, what you can do is. Um, Evan, would you like right click on Pecan and then uh, go up to insert and you'll see comments. Did you say right click on it? Yeah, right click on it so it like highlights the word. Or just have your cursor there and then go to insert and then insert comment. And then tell us how you feel about butter pecan. <laughs> Is that working for you? So you may be deciding something as a group and you say, hey, don't alter the text, but use the comment function to provide feedback on whether we're in agreement with this or you've suggested improvements to this section or whatever. And what it does, let me scroll over so you can see this now, is it will insert um, <laughs> Evan's comment here that I feel this way about it. Now, you also have the option to, if I see that, I can click on it and say, And I can hit reply, and now if Langston wants to weigh in on this matter too, he can as well. And we can kind of create a, uh, an adjoining dialogue about an issue that's represented in the content that we're developing together. And the cool thing is, is that we're not altering this, but we're having a sidebar question about like, what should we do with this matter? How should we approach this better? So you can add things here. Um, we, for instance, are right now are rolling out a customer relations management software. So it's a pretty large scale software piece that we're hopefully going to be delivering uh, as a part of the admissions tool set, but uh, it has the ability to do a lot of things for other departments and organizations across campus. Uh, yes, okay, good. <laughs> so, these guys love each other. Um, <laughs> yes. And we're building this, it's now a 10-page communication plan just for a certain segment of the enrollment process. And so this allowed five or six people to work in and post like, hey, shouldn't we approach it this way? And when you're done with that matter, the cool thing is that you can say, 
um, okay, we've decided, so, or I want to be passive aggressive, I'll just say, oh, it's resolved, and it will go away at that point. So I can just hit the resolve button. Are we, <laughs> it's complicated. Uh, resolve, resolve, resolve. So, uh, and the, the cool thing, you probably can't see it right now, but when people do add comments here, it actually will send you an email notification and say, hey, Eric, um, Langston and Evan are fighting on the page. <laughs> Could you come to the rescue? And then it'll link right to that document so you can go and take care of that business. So, Now, so that's kind of the asynchronous. And the nice thing, too, is that this system actually keeps track of your document as you're going along. It keeps saving file versions. So the nice thing is you can see up here, let me reduce my um, controls here. So you can see it says the last edit was made seconds ago by Student Life GRCC1. So that's one of these guys here. And it will continuously keep saving this. Now, if I would say, you know, last week when we had that one paragraph, it sounded really good. I really feel bad that we changed that. Or you had some information in there that now seems gone. You can go to File, See Revision History. And every time that the document has been touched, you can go back and check out that, that version. So if I want to go back to actually when I started to work on this document, you can see this is when I first started working on it yesterday, setting this up for the demo. And if I really like this version better, I can revert to this original version. Okay. Now, so that's the asynchronous part. Now, you can work in real time to each other. So say I came on late at night and saw that these guys were here. Um, could you guys click on that too? So now we can integrate a chat feature into the document. It doesn't record it in the document at all, but it just provides you an opportunity to synchronously work with people who are not in the same room. So if you guys can play nice, could you type some comments in here this time, please? So we can go ahead and share a chat. To <laughs> we can share, share a chat together while we're working really time. So you might see a colleague, a colleague online and say, like, hey, I wanted to ask you about this. What you, how do you think about this idea? And that you can um, work together. Can you guys stay for every session? <laughs> That'd be great. So. All right, so those are some of the basic tool sets around Google Docs. Now, the other thing that I want to mention, too, is that I really do try to promote this to students, again, about the idea that they, there might be some digital divide there, that they don't have consistent access to technology. And I think this is a great tool for our students to have. And a lot of times they're like, well, Eric, I told my faculty I was going to turn in my Google Doc. And they're like, well, it's a Google Doc. Don't send me a Google Doc. The nice thing about this is this has a two-way integration that's really easy to use as well. So if I have a Word document, but um, I, want, I don't have words stored on one of my computers that I have access to, I can upload it into Google Doc and convert it to a Google Doc so I can now edit here in this screen. Now, if I need to output a document, I can go to File and download this as, and you've got Open Office function, I can download it as a PDF so it won't be modified after I publish it, or I can download it as a Word document and then, my fac then I can upload it to, to Blackboard or something else. And if they don't have Google Docs, it doesn't matter at that point. Now they have a file format that anybody can have access to. So it goes both ways very easy, easy, easily and seamlessly. All right. Let me close a couple of these things up really quick. So I want to show you some of the other um, pieces here. So this was supposed to be, until these guys messed up my whole thing here. Okay, thanks. All right. Um, so I want to show you now the, um, the spreadsheet uh, tool. So besides having documents, again, which would be likened to um, Microsoft Word, we're going to look at something that's similar to Excel. And you can use this in a lot of different ways. I want to show you how the, the sharing functionality can be really um, easy to use. So we coordinate in our office the Sneedon Hall shuttle. And we want to track the usage of that. So we work with um, the RAPID, the Transit Authority, to send us a week, every week totals of how many students are using and, and faculty and staff are using the shuttle. So we get a sense of like when are their peak times, how's it going, are we getting a good return on investment. Uh, and we can drill down on these a little bit more. But then as you can see here, we've got fall of 2011, last year winter, last year fall, and the previous years as well. So we can also see some trend data on what's going on too. So it's a nice way for us to share this document. So I share this with Vicki Janowiak. Uh, Ashley in our office helps coordinate this information as well. But sometimes the rapid wants to take a peek at it, or uh, Dr. Ender might say, can I see some information about the, the shuttle and how that's going, or, or so forth. What we do in that case is we publish it as a web version, because they don't have access to that. And now, this is a link that we send them. 
that they don't have any editing rights, but they can come through here, click on the different tabs and see the different years and see the running total and how things are comparing and so forth. So it's a really easy way to share information without sending files back and forth and they send them the most up-to-date one and, and confusing people. So every time when we, we send them this link, every time they click on it, if it was here or here, they've got the most current information. So it's a nice way to, in real time, share information and data as well. Okay. Um, you probably got an invitation from Ed Sosa at times to sign up for an information station. So this is an example where we changed the sharing level. So we didn't share it with people based on having a Gmail account, but instead we went to the share dialog box. And when we opened it up, instead of going in and adding people by their email addresses, what we did there is we changed this to be public on the web, anybody can find that. That way it takes away any barriers if people do or do not have a Gmail account. They can add data to this, info, to this sheet. So people would come in and say, like, oh yeah, I can do this. So I'll put in my information here. Oops, if I can spell right. It's always, it's always hard to type when people are watching, you notice that? It's true. And see, it's saving up there, saving, all changes saved. So now when Ed opens up this document, he'll see that I've added my information. And what Ed typically does is after he's confirmed with people, he'll highlight, thanks Ann for helping us out, we appreciate that. Um, after we do that, he'll highlight it saying, that, hey, I confirmed that I sent Ann an appointment and a reminder and also the PowerPoint orientation on how to staff an information station. So we check off that we've done these things. So that's a way that we can actually make these doc docs available to people who don't have Gmail accounts. So it's not a barrier anymore, which is good. So there's another example. And then the other one I wanted to share was um, student organization budgets. So fun fact, uh, Molly in our office uh, has the most budgets of anyone in the college to keep track of. And they're not huge budgets. There are student organizations that have 500 to 2,000 to $3,000 in them, but they have lots of transactions. And there's like 50 to 60 of them at any given moment. So, uh, if you see her, please uh, give her your condolences. But um, <laughs> so this is where we've integrated into a web page, and it doesn't show up really nice here. So we did put a link here. It says to view this uh, spreadsheet in full window, click here. But what this allowed us to do is keep track of information in one place and let a lot of people have access to it. And one of the things that really guided this for us was that we wanted to make this information transparent. The students are paying this campus activities fee every semester, it's being managed by our Student Government Association, Student Congress, who then distributes it to the student organizations and the initiatives on campus that students lead. And we want, anytime people say like, where's my money going? Well, here you go. You can have access to that. And so it's trying to make, take away the fact that we're, we're not trying to hide information, but make it as uh, readily available as possible. So students can come in here, and anytime, if I'm a member of, let's say I'm a member of the Anime Club, I can click on my link and find out, you know, how much money do I have left? So I can see how much that I was budgeted, how much I fundraised, and then I can see where I spent it at and what my bottom line is right now. So all of these budgets, though, are just real when people click Correct. Them. Yep. Now, at the document level, Molly has uh, edit rights to it. So do I. The um, Student Congress budget director does as well. So we're able to appropriate that level who needs to edit it at that document level, but then we can publish it as a web page and then share it widely with people. Which is good. <laughs> this is right on time. So, and the other crazy thing is that I can do it here too. And I have done it here. Where we have events going on, where we have sign ups, and I have to, like, uh oh, we don't have this person checked in. I'll open up Google App here and look at the document, search for it, and have it right on my phone. And you can actually edit here too. It's a little more clunky, but you can make edits and changes here as well. So, again, that idea is that this file isn't stored on this one computer or this one server at GRCC, it's available in the cloud. So, no matter where I'm at or what device I'm working from, I can get to this information, which I think makes it a very powerful tool. Uh, and then the last tool set, so we talked about the word, the word processing functionality. We looked at some spreadsheets uh, as examples. The one I want to do now is just show you forms, because we've got a lot of mileage out of this as well. 
And a lot of times you host an event or you have things that people request services from. Um, and this is a way to capture information, respond to people very quickly, and then have a repository of that information that you can access anytime that you need to. So, um, so we use it a lot for sign up, registrations, we use it for evaluation functions, um, requests that people need to make. And as an example, I'll just show you really quick. Um, let me go to one here. So here's a, a form that I was just putting together. Um, oops, that was the wrong one. So here's a, a demo spreadsheet that I was just putting together. And I highly recommend not going to uh, create a form, but create a spreadsheet, and then inside the spreadsheet, create a form. It just creates a better document there. When I'm in, for instance, this is my file directory, and you can see I created a file folder for today, and I dumped all of these in here. And I actually shared that file folder with these guys, um, and that's the easiest way to share things. Now here's where I can upload documents from my hard drive or from the S drive, and then convert them into Google Docs, or I can start from scratch right here and create a document. So if I came in, for instance, and I wanted to create a form, how I would do that is while I'm sit inside of my um, directory here, I would hit Create and select Spreadsheet, and a new spreadsheet would open up. I just click on the title to change that, give it its name, and then uh, I can start working on that. And now if I want to create a form, I go to Tools, Form, Create a Form. And this brings up a new dialog box, a new window for you to work and create your form. So you can title your form, you can put some instructions in right here for the people who will be completing this information for you. And then here's an initial sample question that you can start to work from. And you've got an edit tool, a duplicate tool, and then a trash tool. So the first question I can make just first name, for instance. And then I want to make that a required question, so hit done. There it is. I'll go to the next one and I will edit that. I want to make this last name. Make that a required question. Hit done. I'm going to duplicate this so I got another question I'm working around. And we'll go back to our favorite subject here. That may have ruined a friendship, but. <laughs> and here I actually want to give them um, a series of options to choose from. So I'm going to do check boxes. And I'm going to add in mint, vanilla, chocolate. And then I want to have another. <laughs> I mean, we're big fans of butter pecan here. So I'm going to add other so people can write in things I didn't think about, like coconut or butter pecan. Oh, that's a good one, too. So I've got it kind of set up right now. And so I, I don't want it to be plain Jane, but since we're going with this uh, food theme, let me go to these themes of how it will look. Not really shooting for the Wall Street theme. Oh, that was good. That's food, though. So I'll use that. And that's what it's going to look like when it's published and available to people. And when someone would go in here and type in their information, and my favorite is other, I'm going to go with moose tracks. That was an awesome idea. And I hit submit. Oh, I didn't publish this. Hold on a second. Go back to choosing our theme. I like that, so you just hit apply here. I forgot to do that. Now I'll open it up so I can actually put stuff into it. So here's the information. And I put other in here. Actually, I'm going to do two. See, you can't type when people are watching you. Your response has been recorded. Now it's a generic response. So you can put it in there like, thanks for voting for your favorite ice cream. We'll take this into consideration, but we're having butter pecan anyways. You can put that information <laughs> in that section there. But what, here's the cool part um, is that, boom, there it is. Shows up right on my spreadsheet. So now I can create, <laughs> see? It's amazing, I'm all excited. So now I can create another comment here saying that I followed up or that we sent a confirmation. And then we can track what we're doing with this information that we're receiving. And then I can provide access to people in my office who are helping organize our potluck and what ice cream we're having. And so everybody's staying on the same page. Okay. So I'm going to have a little fun with this. So I've created a form just special for today. So can you guys, um, if we go back to, wow, well, I have a lot of windows open now. That last link, could you click on that and fill out that form for me? 
yeah, the bit.ly, you know, it says GRCC ESP eval. Here's one of the downfalls of Google, is when you create a document or you want to share it with people and they're not on Gmail, see that URL creates up there? It's obscene. <laughs> so you have to be good about hyperlinking, like please click here, highlight here, insert hyperlink to that. Yep, or I'm a big fan of Bitly as well. So you can create an account in Bitly. So, and I, I created like a cheat sheet of everything we talked about today. I'm gonna ask Art to send it to you electronically afterwards. So all these things I've talked about will have links to YouTube videos and things about how to use it. But Bitly is one of my favorites as well. Yeah. Oh sure, yeah. I wouldn't just provide a link. It's gonna be a published Google Doc actually, so it'll be a link. So you can do whatever you want with it. So. You got it, exactly. So uh, Bitly allows you to go in and put in one of these obscenely long URLs and it will shrink it for you. And then you also have the ability to customize it. So as long as no one's taken this before, um, you can type in um, other ways that you want to recognize that URL so it's kind of specific to your, your use. The thing about it is it is case sensitive. So if you were to type this in manually, you'd have to capitalize the ESP to get to that site. Have you guys completed it now? Uh, okay. I'm okay. I'm <laughs> Good luck today, okay? Yeah. All, right, so. All right, so let me show you the form that these guys just took. So um, I developed a scientific instrument to determine the coolness of ESPs. So they, I wanted first to, to uh, rate the coolness factors of ESP on a scale of boring McBoringson up to super cool. And then what makes ESPs so cool? And what is their coolest attribute? Um, so they can select things from... Um, <laughs> So I can go through here. I think a 10 is deserved. Um, and I think all these reasons are why ESP are so cool. So I'm just going to click them all in here. And this one, I got to only pick one. So select your top choice. Uh, I'm looking around the room, I'm going to go with this one. <laughs> all right, and then I hit Submit. I get a little confirmation. Thank you for contributing to our scientific study. Excellent. And then let me go to the results now. Here it is. So now I have a running log of all the people who've made, you know, a six? Who wrote that? That's terrible. But I can see what's going on. So I can see like people's feedback and information that they've contributed. Lots of tens. Okay, good. We're back on the right page now. So these are the two that you guys just submitted, correct? Yeah. Okay. I think that we should transfer ever to a different <laughs> <laughs> so here's your, here's your replies. Um, yeah, I tried. <laughs> now here's something else that's really cool too, is if I go back up to my form tool, I want to see show summary of responses. I get a new window and it's done all the calculations for me. So now I can see bar graphs and pie charts of how people responded to this. The only thing it doesn't do very well, so here's how cool are ESP. So, um, it looks like the vast majority are rating you at 10. You know, a lot of highs. There was a couple sixes in there, so just be wary. And then if we look at what are the attributes, um, because they actually have ESP. That's the most um, important way that... And then if we look at what's your coolest attribute, it looks it's your kick-ass knowledge of, uh, of Excel is the one that uh, is the highest selected. And then it does give you a, a look of... The, this is what doesn't show up very well here. Anytime you have an open-ended question, it starts to give you some feedback, but you really need to get that off of your spreadsheet um, and tally it that way. But the graphics are a nice way to pull that out as well. All right. So that was a lot of ground to cover in a, in a hurry. So next question. Yeah. All Yes, unless you put in there... Um, unless you put in there a field to capture their name and email address and made it a mandatory field, then you would be able to track that. It would be based on them, yeah, um, divulging that information, but, but that's, uh, it's all there available for you, yeah. So this is the document that I'm working on, and I'll finalize it, and I'll ask Art to distribute it to everybody. But hopefully it provides a good outline of some of the things that we shared today. And I'm going to go back, double back, and show you just a little bit more on Prezi. Uh, but I got information about Google Docs, other cloud computing tools. So some other things that we've seen out there that are cloud-based that I think could be effective or useful for you. Uh, anybody here had a doodle before? No? Has anybody here had to schedule a meeting with people both GRCC and otherwise? And how much of a pain in the butt that is? Doodle is a really cool tool. 
you can go in and create a new doodle, and then you specify, like these are the chunks of times we're considering, and you send a list that link to everybody that you need to get feedback from, and they get to go in and click, like they create a role for their name, and then you get a, 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 a nice snapshot of all that, because you can see like, okay, here's the time that we can all do this, or we're just missing Evan, that's okay, we'll move on. <laughs> so that's kind of what it allows you to do. Uh, Dropbox is kind of similar to Google Docs, but it doesn't have the software with it. So you can just create a shared virtual drive in the cloud, and then provision access to people, but a Word document stays a Word document, a PDF document stays a PDF document. Skype you're probably familiar with, a way to have video or free telephone conferencing. Evernote's a really cool tool. It allows you to take snapshots, web clippings, uh, write yourself notes, categorize them, and again, no matter what device you're on, you can have in that information at, at your fingertips. Uh, we Join In is a web-based sign-up sheet, so if you were having an event and wanted to use this as a way to do that. Uh, Animoto, we like that a lot in our office when we have photos from events and video clips. It's a really simple web-based video editor, and the output of it um, is really top-notch. It's really well done. And then last, Bitly, I talked about, because you don't want to send people those really long URLs. So I will share this um, information with you after the fact. <laughs> Pinterest, yeah, not going there. No. Not going there. Or stumble upon. Stumble upon. All right, and the last thing I wanted to show you was just a little bit about Prezi. I don't know about you, but I'm so sick and tired of being killed with PowerPoint. I'm, just, I'm, t I'm exhausted with it. People will put PowerPoint presentation together, they'll put their talking points on it, and then they'll read them to you bullet by bullet. Hopefully today, mine was an antithesis to that, that I had cues up here, but I didn't talk specifically from that. And the reason I like Prezi quite a bit, besides it can make you motion sick, um, is it does create this dynamic, um, animation to it as well. But for me, it's not linear. It's much more creative and organic. And I like the idea that I can show a big picture of something. It's the idea of seeing the, tre you know, the trees in the forest. And then drill down on things, but yet still maintain the relationship of a larger concept or idea. So it's one of the reasons why I really like this tool set. Um, and I think you can have a lot of fun with it. I just want to show you what it looks like in an editor mode, because it kind of scares people. I won't mention any names, but someone was freaking out about it earlier when they got here. Yeah, I'll see. <laughs> but this is what it looks like. And I'm going to zoom out so you can kind of see everything that I was working on. But here's my presentation that I built. So you can see it's not like slide after slide. But if you want to make kind of like slide concepts, you can use frames. So you can see there's kind of like a little blue box drawn around here. And that allows me to group things together and kind of move around that one concept or content area. And then when you're done setting things up, you build the path by which you're going to take your um, participants through that. So that path shows up, and you can see slide by slide and view what's going to happen every time you go through. And that way you can come back to ideas and move around pretty seamlessly. And how you position an item by making it smaller or bigger, when it moves to that, that's what creates that animation, because it's getting to that object on your canvas. So that's Prezi in a very small introduction. It's got this cool thing called the Prezi Zebra tool, and this is how you modify documents. And I did provide a brief demo video in the sheet that I'll be sending out to you as a follow-up. But this is where all your tools are at. And you create Prezi here inside the web browser. Again, this is a cloud computing piece. And then when you're done with it, you exit out and you download the final version to your desktop so you can drive it right from there. And it actually uploads the, um, you don't have to have an internet connection, it uploads the video clips as well, which is pretty slick. All right, so that was a lot of info. We've got four minutes left for Q&A. Glad to take any questions you may have. Did you fall asleep? You good? All right, great. Yeah. So, Eric, oh. I know I created a Google Doc a year ago, and Sandy yep. was kind enough to help me out, you know, and it was just like, I don't know how I found out that you used it or were so familiar with it, but, you know, what resource do we have for assistance mm -hmm. in creating these documents? Um, it, what's been one of my best friends is YouTube. Anytime I have a question, I'll open up YouTube and say, Google Doc, how do you, and type in a question. And you'd be surprised how many people have gone out and done like step-by-step -step videos using Camtasia or another video capturing type thing to show you how to accomplish that. Um, I think there's a network here of folks that can help. I think there's probably worthwhile talking to um, staff development about a way to maybe create some of these programs. And again, it's just pushing my, my my agenda, so I love it. <laughs> so, if you really see the value in this, 
um, you know, help me, help me say that to the, the community because it would be a big change. It would get a lot of people in an uproar about changing their e email system. But I think the tool set here, it, my other perspective too is for faculty to collaborate with students it would be a really cool uh, tool set as well. Well, the other thing is your VPN doesn't work well. No. So many locations. Yep. You know, constantly here, I try to get in, I try to do this, I try to do that, I try to access that. Yeah, it's very true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll relay that. Yeah. I think we'll probably get some response from the other two groups as well. So I think it's something that we want to Becky, you had a question earlier, too. In the forums, it actually holds our formatting, or does this information have to go into the text? I'm not sure I follow. What do you mean? So when you get it submitted, looking at exactly what you did on the web page? No. No, it goes right into that, um, yeah, that uh, repository of the spreadsheet. Well, I'd like to thank my volunteers. I appreciate it. OK, I'm, I'm going to remove that. But thank you, everybody. It was great to see you. I hope you find ways that this could be valuable to you. Before you run off, let me just say, lessons learned.